Hello ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us for another installment of the WNS Operative Grand Rounds. Today we have a special guest, Dr. Dan Kelly from St. John's Health Center and John Wayne Cancer Institute. He's director of the Brain Tumor and Pituitary Disorder Program there. He is truly a master surgeon, a gifted surgeon that I have seen at work when I was at UCLA, and I'm very appreciative that he's going to share his expertise regarding nuances of technique for minimally invasive skull-based surgery. Dan, thanks again, and please go ahead. Thanks very much, Aaron. Pleasure to uh, participate uh, in your series here. So what I thought I would do today is to talk about the applications and some of the technical nuances of uh, keyhole and endoscopic uh, brain and skull-based tumor removal. And I'm really going to focus on four approaches. Um, and where I think um, these uh, techniques are most applicable. And I'm going to focus a lot on endoscopy. There's my disclosures uh, with Mizuho. And so what I'd like to do is really focus on the concept of keyhole surgery, which is really the idea of removing tumors through uh, smaller, more precise openings to, to minimize uh, collateral damage uh, to the brain, scalp, and, and muscle. And we're going to start with the endonasal endoscopic approach because really that is the, um, the approach that has embraced the endoscope more than any of other areas of neurosurgery. And I think it's a nice platform for what we can do with this enhanced visualization that we get with the endoscope. Then I'm going to talk about the uh, supraorbital approach. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about uh, what we like to refer to as gravity-assisted transdural approaches and where the utility of the endoscope comes in there. So transfalcine uh, and transtentorial approaches. And what I like to tell patients is that our goal is really to sneak in and sneak out uh, and to, to enter and leave unnoticed with as much stealth as possible and, of course, not to get caught. And, and of course, complication avoidance uh, is a big part of all this, and we'll touch on that uh, as well. So these approaches, uh, this concept of keyhole surgery, which has really been around for several decades, I think has come into a new era. A lot of the traditional skull-based approaches that we've used um, have been um, augmented or replaced in some instances because of numerous technical advances, advances which have come together in the last uh, couple decades. And of course, these, these are all familiar to you. Uh, Frameless navigation, um, tractography, and functional MRI. Our instruments have gotten better, more refined. The ultrasound probe can be very useful for real-time navigation. The Doppler probe, which I think is really critical, particularly for uh, endonasal endoscopic transpenoidal surgery, but also in intracranial surgery. And then finally, the endoscope. And I think the endoscope has really helped us uh, revolutionize a number of these uh, techniques. And again, I want to sort of highlight the transpenoidal approach because I think it's really where the endoscope has shown its most benefit. And this, this little cartoon here shows uh, what we're all familiar with the microscope. It gives us a beautiful up close view, but it does provide somewhat of a, a, a tunnel vision. Um, whereas with the endoscope, because the scope itself is taken into the cavity, the operative site, uh, it gives us this more uh, panoramic uh, high resolution view and we can use uh, angled endoscopes to look around uh, corners, and it's really a different sort of view compared to the microscope. And here's just an example of a pituitary case where you can see the, the lesion on the MRI is above, and you can see here the view through a speculum in the microscope, somewhat dark, definitely looking very clearly at the, at the cella here and the bone edges. But here when we bring the endoscope in, the same image, you can see this much more panoramic view. You can see the carotids here, uh, the cavernous carotids. You can see the optical carotid recesses here. You can begin to see the optic canals here. A much different view, much more panoramic, and particularly now with our high-definition cameras, um, the views are just uh, really unparalleled. So there's the microscope and the endoscope. Um, and when we use the endoscope, not just in uh, endonasal surgery, but intracranially, there's really several ways to use it. So we can just take a look with the endoscope. Did we miss any tumor that we could have otherwise, uh, we might have otherwise missed with the microscope? Do we do an endoscope-assisted removal, or can we do a fully endoscopic removal, which is what many of us have gone to uh, in transphenoidal uh, surgery? And there's some good data to, to really suggest that the endoscope is helping us 